You can almost hear his heart racing as he walks willingly into the big house. The high fence, the razor wire, the armed guards in the watchtowers. Arms out. Images that take him back to the darkest days of his life. It's an ugly place. It's ugly. It's nasty. It's dirty. He's going inside the belly of the beast to help inmates who are wrongfully convicted. Why? Because he once walked in their shoes. Who better know than us? You know what I mean? Who better know what to look for? That warm spring night 21 years ago in the tough Oak Cliff neighborhood of Dallas is still a memory that's all too fresh for Christopher Scott. So every time I even pass by, I get goosebumps. Being in this neighborhood at that particular day changed my life forever. That's the day cops arrested Chris for a murder he didn't commit. So the last place you were free before going into prison was right here? Right here, yeah, laying down in this grass right here. Chris was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Just down the street inside this rundown duplex, an alleged crack dealer named Alfonso Aguilar and his wife had just been held up at gunpoint. Had you even heard of Alfonso Aguilar? Never heard of him. And you didn't know him? Didn't know him. Alfonso was shot and killed as the attackers sexually assaulted his wife. So what did you think when you were here at your friend's house and you see the police pulling up? I, I thought they was looking for someone, but I didn't think they was looking for us. And, you know, it was surprising that when they asked us to come out and when we tried to, they came in with guns drawn. In this house? In that house right there. I was sitting on the couch. Chris says cops tested his hands for a gunshot residue and then took him downtown to headquarters for a lineup. It was like 18 of us in the room. So they took the other 17 people and put them on the other side of the room so they couldn't be seen. They handcuffed me to a bench in front of the glass door and the cop walked the lady up to me and said, this is the guy that killed your husband. And she said, yes, that's him. Based solely on the woman's identification, Chris is charged with capital murder, even though there is no physical evidence tying him to the case and no gunshot residue on his hands. I'm like, capital murder? I'm like, I don't, know, I don't even know what capital murder means. And as I'm walking out the interrogation room, an officer stops me. But he said, look, I'm going to tell you something. This is the reason I don't think you did it. Now, this is an officer. This is an officer. He said, you're well-groomed, you're well-dressed, you're well-spoken, you're driving a nice car. I find a paycheck stub in your back pocket. He said, and this crime is not the crime of somebody like you. This is a crime of a dope fiend. But they're all pinning it on, on me. You. The part that gets me the most is the description that came over the police scanner. Which was? Which was two African-American men, dark complected, one tall, one median height, with a low haircut. That's everybody in the neighborhood. The court sets bond at $1 million. And I talked to my attorney, and he told me, like, really, they don't have a capital murder case. They don't have it because they don't have no murder weapon, no fingerprints, or nothing. I can't make bonds, so I was like, I'm going to have to just sit this out, and I'm going to have to fight this, so I feel like I may be able to win when I go to court. But when Chris gets that court date, he quickly realizes this probably isn't going to end in his favor. So now I'm looking at a white judge, a white prosecutor, my attorney white, and all 12 jury members white. It was fun. I made a joke, at, and it's not fun. I said, the only thing of color in this courtroom is me and the furniture. So right then I said, oh, I'm going to prison. What was it like being tried for a murder that you know you did not commit? You know, it's like seeing a TV show. Everybody playing their role. The prosecutor is trying to win an Oscar. But I got to sell it to the jurors to get this conviction. Despite the lack of physical evidence, it was the woman's identification that convinced jurors. They deliberated only six minutes before delivering a guilty verdict. My judge asked me an insane question. She was like, why should not seek the death penalty on you? The only thing I could say is like, how could you kill an innocent man? And you know, her words was, you know what? You just saved your own life. We're not gonna kill you. 
but we're going to give you a capital life sentence. Now a lifer, Chris tells anyone who will listen he's innocent. No one seemed to believe him until a chance encounter in a totally different prison where Chris's biological brother was serving time. My brother worked in a barbershop, and Lonzo came in a barbershop. Alonzo, Alonzo Hardy. He was in for a robbery conviction. Chris says Alonzo bragged to his brother about how he got away with murder. Like me and my friend, we robbed and killed this Hispanic guy, Nash, two guys in prison, you know, for this case. And my brother was like, that sounds kind of familiar. He was like, well, you know something about the guy that's locked up for you? My brother said, dude, that's my little brother. And my brother say, well, you already know what you got to do. You got to do the right thing. Or right, every day you're in prison going to be a living nightmare for you, so make the choice. Hardy made his choice, filing this four-page handwritten confession letter, admitting to his involvement in the killing. You served his time. Exactly. Armed with that affidavit, Chris goes to court to try to clear his name. And this time, he's got a big gun on his side. Then Dallas County District Attorney Craig Watkins. Watkins had vowed to fix the wrongful convictions of his predecessors. James Hammond is an investigator for the Conviction Integrity Unit, which cleared more than two dozen men in the last decade. Eyewitness identification is not the gold standard that everyone thought it to be. You, know, you are impacted by your emotions at the time, and you, know, you can get it wrong. And she got it wrong? Yes. And it cost Christopher years of his life? Yes. Finally, after 13 years behind bars, Chris is smiling, and his family and friends are cheering as the court makes a stunning reversal. In the Court of Criminal Appeals opinion, this court finds you actually innocent of these offenses. Today, you are a free man. What was that walk like into the free world from prison? It's crazy because I didn't know how to use a cell phone. I didn't know what navigation meant. I would get lost at night, and I had to call somebody right to like, Give me back to, you know, where I was at. You were lost like a little child in your own city. In my own city, in my own city. And I had Dallas County to vote for that because they did that to me. I didn't do it to myself, they did it. Mm. And we gotta do better. We gotta do much better. Christopher Scott has a score to settle. But I wouldn't have never been put in that position if it wasn't for y'all. It's almost like a prison cage match between two aging tough guys. In a documentary for PBS, Chris is confronting the man who actually committed the murder that was pinned on him. You just put yourself in my shoes in a situation like that. I just couldn't see how they could convict y'all because they didn't have no evidence. It was intense. I mean, the tension in the room, you, you could cut it with a, with a knife. The guard was like, look, I'm going to lock the door. I'm going to leave. Do what you got to do. Alonzo Hardy's silence was so loud, the state locked up Chris for a murder he didn't commit. But Hardy's confession letter eventually set Chris free. So why did you confess? Well, you know, I had to deal with what God asked me to do. Because there wasn't no need of me holding y'all in the penitentiary for something that y'all didn't do when I was already here anyway. I don't like harboring no ill will for nobody or hate nobody. Just believe y'all destroyed a whole lot of lives that day. How was yes. that like confronting him? How did you feel? I felt good, but I just felt like I didn't get what I wanted because he didn't say he didn't never apologize. So at the end of the day, when I left, I left knowing that he was a coward. He told me that I should have been more grateful that he was the reason I was uh, exonerated. I said, well, what you thought I was gonna bring you a box of chocolate and a dozen of roses and say thank you? Have you forgiven Hardy? Yeah, I can forgive him, but I, I can't forget. Have you forgiven the police officers involved and the system? No, it's hard for me to forgive them because they gotta do better. What have you lost and can this ever be made up to you? 
I lost those 13 years that I can't get back. You can't get it back. There's no way you can go into a time machine and say, take me back to 1997. So there's no way. Chris served 13 years of a life sentence doing Hardy's time until he was sensationally exonerated. You can never make this right. Right. But in an effort to try to compensate you, mm -hmm. what were you awarded? They awarded me like $1.2 million. Money that helps him with the most important person in his life, his grandson, Trey. So this is your priority now, yeah, the Trey yeah, here. Yeah, he's my priority because, you know, he's the same age his dad was when I went to prison. Mm -hmm. Trey's dad, Chris Jr., is serving a seven-year sentence for aggravated robbery. It seemed like karma just came back and bit me again because it's like, the age that I went to prison, he went to prison. The age of his son is right now is the age he was when I went in. And in between playground dates with Trey, Chris is working on what may be his true calling in life, helping others who, like him, were wrongfully convicted. What made you decide that you wanted to give back and to help others who were wrongfully convicted? I made that decision while I was in prison. Every morning I woke up and I looked in that mirror, I was like, man, I'm in prison for somebody in Duke. Chris and two other exonerated men started a nonprofit organization called House of Renewed Hope. They wanted me to confess, uh, and I'm going like, no, no, I didn't do it, right? Their amazing story is featured on the upcoming documentary, True Conviction, airing later this month on PBS. So together, you and your partners in this documentary have served how many years in prison? Uh, like 72 years. Wow, you've spent a lifetime collectively in prison. Right, yes we have. Every morning, Chris goes through the stack of mail from inmates. Then he and his colleagues sit over plates of barbecue and debate the merits of the cases. I'm an innocent man serving a life sentence, wrongfully convicted of a crime I did not commit. How many letters do you get on a weekly basis from others who say they're innocent? Maybe 100 per week. Mm -hmm. Easy. Having been in their situation, what's it like reading those letters? It's heart-wrenching because every time you pick up that letter, you know you're going to see some of you inside it. If they're telling the truth, you're going to feel it. Letters like the one from Isaiah Hill. I don't have nobody. I mean, this is for 36 years, man. In prison for a robbery he says he didn't do. Now, I just think that Isaiah Hill got set up. When I first got his letter, his cellmate wrote him because he couldn't write. And I was like, man, this guy been locked up for 36 years for a aggravated robbery case where nobody got hurt and it was like a hundred fifty dollar took. They say you was mentally disabled. Yes, sir. So why your lawyer didn't bring that up in trial? He, he didn't bring it up. So right then I said, man, look, send it to me. I'm gonna do what I can. You knew he wasn't lying. I, I knew he wasn't lying because I saw myself in him. Even if he had done that robbery with no injury, $150. 41, 41 years? 41 years. Having served 36? Yeah. He should have been out. He should have been out. And you can watch Chris along with two other recently exonerated inmates as they try to help wrongfully convicted prisoners get their freedom back in true conviction.